Mean Girls is celebrating its 20-year anniversary. And Tim Meadows, along with actor and founder of the Detroit Creativity Project, Mark Evans Jackson, Mark Evan Jackson, will host a watch and Q&A session at Royal Oak Imagine Theater. Guests will watch the film on the big screen and afterwards ask questions about the cult classic. Joining us in studio right now is one of the stars of Mean Girls, in addition to many other films, Tim Meadows. Tim, welcome to the Metro. Thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be here. Awesome. So I'm thinking a little bit, you're from Highland Park, you're from this parts of the state. How does it feel to be back? Uh, it feels great. I actually live here, oh. which I've been very, very uh, secretive about. Yeah. Very few people know. The cat's out the bag. No? It's yeah, it's out, out the bag. Out of the bag. <laughs> so... There's a generation of people, including me, that needed a movie like Mean Girls growing up, 2004, just kind of going into uh, high school adolescence. You just kind of needed to, to feel a part of something bigger. So what has it been like being a part of that cult classic Mean Girls? Uh, it feels like I've been in a Christmas movie or something that people watch every year, you know, that they like. Um, it's, it was a trip because I, I had no idea that it was going to turn out like this and that it was going to have such a impact on young women generation after generation after generation which has been pretty nice from my career yeah exactly um but yeah it's been i, I I've, I've enjoyed it and i i <clears throat> i really do thank tina fey uh for putting me in this and making me a part of it um i was a veteran at, at second city in chicago and i went back and improvised with her cast back in the day and she and i had a great improv you know connection with each other and she when she came to SNL, she wrote for me. She kept me in, uh, and she put me in this. And I feel really blessed, I guess, is to have her attention and, you know, yeah, generosity. So I'm thinking about, <laughs> once again, celebrating, commemorating 20 years of Mean Girls. And you talked a little bit about how it impacted your career. And it's leading me to think, to today, you were recently in a, a film with Nicolas Cage. Yes. Um, and just... Uh, uh, it's a uh, dream scenario almost watched that recently actually but talk mm -hmm. a little bit about where your career is now especially uh, 20 years ago from Mean Girls up until today um, well it's been uh, it's been a trip I mean I have come to the realization that I'm a veteran uh, and I've been in this business for 30 years and I've been a professional at it um, and I, I, I think a big change for me came when I accepted my role which I was I realized like I'm not going to be a star of a movie. I may be a star of a TV show, but the way my career is is that I get hired to either make small roles funnier or more interesting, and then I deliver. So I'm like a, I'm, I always say I'm like a craftsman. I come in and I, if you want a nice desk made, then I'm the guy to call. You know, if you got plumbing problems in your movie. <laughs> I'm the dude that comes through and put the plunger in and makes this dumb scene that you didn't pay much attention to in the writing process a lot funnier. Yes, I yeah. think about Brooklyn Nine-Nine and the character you play when you're the cannibal yeah. in prison. And that little character, that little scene, you shine, you shine so much. Thank you. That I remember it every time I watch the show. I think about that scene. I think well, about your character on the show. Yeah, and I have to say, like that was one of the parts that I... they. So Andy Sandberg called me and said, we're trying to cast this part and it's a really horrible character, but we, it's a really likable person. Mm -hmm. And we thought of you. And I was like, oh, what is it? <laughs> and he goes, oh, it's a cannibal that ate kids. <laughs> and he's in prison. And I was like, you thought of me? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, because we, we need the guy to be really likable. And, you know, you're a likable person. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, I can, I can do that, I guess. And and when I did it, I just, he just like, just be yourself, just be. But he was like, I want you to be a little bit more innocent and uh, just uh, and smile a lot, you know. <laughs> So, yeah, I love working with those guys, too. Yeah. They, they're fun. That was one of my favorite things. Uh, uh, like I said, the characters. It's a likable guy, but then he'd reach out and bite at uh, Andy's character. Yeah. And it'd just be hilarious. But uh, just thinking about the nonprofit itself, Detroit mm -hmm. Creativity Project, we actually spoke uh, a little bit earlier about the project and the improv uh, show that the kids had at Detroit Public Theater. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about working with that group. What has it been like working with young people? Well, for me, I'm mainly a I, – I raise money for yes, them. Yes, yes. I've been a donator for years. Um, I've known Mark for a long time. And when he told me this was happening, 
I was like, this is definitely something that I'd like to help contribute to because improv not only, you know, provided this career that I have, but it also changed my life and it made it made a big difference. I became more confident in myself. I I, real, I learned how to express myself artistically. Um, I found myself um, being able to work within groups better and uh, being and, and having confidence in um, who I am and my ideas and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was really I, I want to pass that on and 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 I hope the kids in Detroit, um, which is where we focus it can get the benefit of it, you know. And when I think about that, of course, like you said, you're a contributor, you donate to the Detroit Creativity Project. Of course, you're going to be donating time this weekend, mm -hmm. just chatting with audiences and kind of uh, getting out there and talking about 20 years of Mean Girls. But mm -hmm. what is it like to talk to the audience that is, once again, your 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 neighbors, your your people you grow, you know what I mean? Like these are people that are just, you know, around. I hope my neighbors don't come. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see no, I love my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> they got a lot of questions for me, I'm sure. Like, yeah. why do you park your car over there all the time? <laughs> Shut up. I'm the, I'm the reason people know this place. <laughs> um, no, it's going to be fun. You know, I uh, one thing I will say is, like, since I moved back, one of the things that have been really great for me is I, I do yoga. And mm -hmm. I go out and do yoga. And I'm going to plug my favorite place, Citizens Yoga, downtown Detroit and, and Royal Oak. And... A lot of these, this has become, become a community for me. And like a lot of those people, I I told the owner, Casey Must, about it. And she just spread the word. And our ticket sales just picked up really quick. Um, and I feel like that's one of the great things about being back here in Detroit is like I get to make new friends. And and it's just been great. I mean, I'm really happy that I, I moved back, you know. Uh, uh, this staying on the topic of Detroit in this yes. particular area, what was it like growing up in this area, growing up in Detroit? Well, I grew up in uh, over on the east side, Coney Gardens, uh, yeah. Slum Village. Yeah, yeah you yeah. and Dylan. Yeah, right That's on. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I went to Mason Elementary, Farwell Junior High, yeah. and Pershing High. Mm -hmm. And I grew up during the period like in the mid late seventies where it was a big there was a big transition in that neighborhood and it was becoming more African American, but it was still a heavy Polish neighborhood too, because it's so close to Hamtramck. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the friends that I grew up with from sixth grade on were either African American or Polish. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had a yeah, my friend Stosh, his name was Stanley, but we used to call him Stosh. Oh but uh I just I, I, w those friendships lasted all the way through, and dur during the period it got rougher, and and then that was a period when I went to Wayne State University, and well here, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I went to school here, nice. and um, and then I decided after a certain period that I have to go out and try to make a, a life of my own away from here. Yeah. I just felt like I was it was a certain certain point there was nothing for me to grow into, and I didn't feel like. I didn't feel comfortable. It was it's weird because mm -hmm. now that I'm older, I think back on those days and I was I realized I was really I needed to get out because I didn't like my surroundings, you know. And so because I in the in the in that in that time I was working for the Detroit People Mover Project yeah. in the offices. Uh and then I was and so I started saving up my money and I thought, well, I can be broke or have a decent job in Detroit or I can go to Chicago, have a decent job and study improv with all of these great teachers. And so I gave myself five years. I said, five years, if I'm not a working actor, I'm going to go back to Wayne state, finish getting to advertising, which was my other interest. And then I, um, my hand to God, <laughs> uh, five years from the time that I said it, I was on Saturday Night Live. It was to the month almost mm. in February of 2000, 2000 or, or, or of 90, 2000, uh, of, of 90, February of 90. And so it was like literally a five year span. And I just worked as hard as I could. I had a singular focus, which was just to be better as an actor. It wasn't to get on SNL. It wasn't to be a stand up. It wasn't to become a, you know, to do movies or become a craftsman in, you know, films. <laughs> It was just to become better. And I was like, I want to be the best. I want to be the best. I want to be the best. And I worked in a record store. 
and I worked at a, I sold electronics and I just studied improv and I did improv wherever I could. And I, you know, and it was a big lesson. And that work ethic came from here. Yeah. It was what I learned here. It was like every day you got to get out and do it, you know? So. Detroit hustles harder. That's, that's right. What, that's what it is. That's, that's true. You just do. Motivated. You just motivated the heck out of know. me. The thing that motivates <laughs> me here is hearing that you have this uh, marketing background and advertisement. Because let me tell you, depending on what your rates are, uh, mm-hmm. we have some projects here that we're working on, Tim. Yeah. So if you ever do want to like expand <laughs> out, I think that we can help you out with that, too. My rates are low. <laughs> Very low right now. It'll be This will be the first job I, I'll take. But Whatever you need. I mean, <laughs> yeah. If I'm, you know, I, you know, I always thought like, well, if I didn't do this, I would have been writing commercials or coming up with, yeah. you know, ad campaigns or something like that. If I may jump in, though, one of yes. the things that I think is interesting is how you did come back, because I find this with a lot of folks who mm-hmm. go out to California, L.A., New York, wherever. Right all times feel compelled to come back to Detroit. And whereas I'm sure your friends who are more from a New York, Chicago, all these big cities are like, Mm -hmm. why would you go back for the Michiganders who come back? It's always like, I got to come back. So can you just tell us a little bit about what your calculation was? What compelled you to come back and what these folks are missing? Well, what compelled me originally was family. And I was coming back a lot for either weddings or funerals. And I would come in and and stay for a few days and leave and then I started coming back and staying for longer periods and I would get a hotel or Airbnb and just stay for a month or something and then I started seeing my friends that I grew up with and you know my buddy Jerome Eager who I'll shout his name out uh he's he's one of the boosters here my friends who like he's really involved in real estate and stuff like that but he's just a big Detroit booster and so when I would come here I would hang out with him and he would take me every good restaurants and this is you know these are places you know that are happening downtown and stuff and then I just I was like boy you know this is not bad it feels like the lower east side of New York back in the 90s almost Mm -hmm. like there's really cool places to go people are nice you know it's kind of edgy you know and so and then the other thing that really made it easier for me was the cost of living and just being able to afford to like I can buy a house here it's a nice size place and it doesn't, you know, uh, it doesn't hurt me or anything, you know. You know? Uh, so, yeah, the bankruptcy, <laughs> the city bankruptcy was good for Tim Meadows. <laughs> not bad if there's going to be a positive to come out of this, yes, right? Yes, I'm the only positive to come <laughs> out of the bankruptcy. <laughs> Tim Meadows is a Detroit native, actor and comedian, and he is he is from town. He's been in town. He talked about being here now. So you're mm-hmm. here already in the city of Detroit, but you're going to be at a special screening of Mean Girls happening at the Royal Oak Imagine this Saturday. Mm-hmm. Tickets uh, benefit the Detroit Creativity Project, and you can get your tickets at dcpimprov.org. That is dcpimprov.org to get your tickets beforehand to see Tim Meadows and Mean Girls celebrating 20 years. Thank you so much for joining us on the Metro. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And anytime you want me to come back, even just to sit around and shoot Don't this tempt stuff. us. Yeah. Don't tempt yeah. us. Yeah. Well, you got my number now. Oh, yeah, well, we this do. is good. And this is also called Offer and Acceptance in the World of Law. So I accept Tim Meadows <laughs> and look forward to seeing you in the future. Yes, I we something. do. Thank you very much. Take care.